Solway, we're continuing with Rumor, here in lines 178 to 183. Ilam terra parens irin retata deorum extremut periben coeien celado quesororem progenuit pedibus celeret pernicibus aldis monstro rendin gens cui quat sunt corpore plumae tot vigiles oculis subter mirabile dictu tot linguae toti do rasonan tot subreget aures so we're still talking about rumor the subject though is terra parens parent earth and we got to put this little phrase in here, ut perhibent, as they say. Ut perhibent, as they say, as it is reported in the myths and the legends. Parent earth progenuit. Gave birth. That's the verb. Okay, it's kind of removed there. So one more time. Parent earth, as they say... And we could add this in first, actually. We've got our verb down here, but... Ira in retata. This describes parent earth enraged by the anger of the gods, meaning she was angry at the gods. This is an objective genitive here. By anger of the gods. So that's... Genitive, oh no, no, ablative first. Get ablative by anger and then of the gods. She's angry at them. Progenuit, gave birth. To ilam, meaning this is rumor, okay, that's accusative. And that's referring to rumor or fama, I guess I should say. Extremum, last. Let's go together. And think of extremum adverbially here. So, parent earth, enraged, in anger of the gods, as they say, gave birth to that one, meaning fama, last. And then in apposition, the sororem, the sister, that's accusative, to... Coyus and enceladus. Coyus and enceladus. Those are dative's sister to them. Okay, to coyus and enceladus. Parent Earth, as they say, in, enraged in her anger of the gods at the gods, gave birth to that one last the sister of Coyus and Enceladus. See Far's note, Earth was enraged because the gods slayed her children, the Titans, so then she gave birth to giants. And so Elam, which is Fama, is a giant, just described as such by Virgil, how she grows in size, and Coyus and Enceladus also. Now another edition I read said that Coyus was a Titan and Enceladus was a giant, they're not super important to our discussion here, to translating, but just know they're titans or giants. Pedibus celer et pernicibus alis, monstro rendingens. She is a celerem, swift by her feet. So swift also modifies or goes with, yeah, modifies with extremum. And ilam, they're all accusatives. Likewise with sororem, right? And she is swift in feet, so that's an ablative, with her feet. And with her swift wings, alis pernicibus. And then this is in op apposition to fama, a Horrendous monster or portent. Ingens. Huge. These are all describing 
here. Uh, this is nominative form describing uh, fama. These are in the accusative form up here, but now we're going to nominative form because we're uh, we're going to use nominative for the rest of this. A huge monster, or I mean a horrendous monster, huge. Kui, to whom, and this is a dative showing possession here, to whom there are. Remember, you can use the dative to show possession. You can also use the genitive to show possession. Uh, if you want to say something like, I have a toga, you could say, habe o togam, or you could also say, toga est mihi, there is a toga to me. So this genitive, kui, to whom, is showing possession, the things that fama possesses. To whom, and then when you go in here, quat, translate as many. Let's, let me make a little note for that. Quat, do as many. To whom sunt, there are, as many feathers with respect to her body or on her body. And then these, all these, taught, taught, totidem, taught, as there are. Translate that as, as there are. Okay, so to whom there are, sunt is your verb, there are as many plumai, that's the subject of this little clause, of this clause here, to whom there are as many feathers on her body as there are watchful eyes. Watchful eyes, those go together. Underneath, subter, underneath. And then marvelous to say, we have the supine here. Marvelous to say, in a sense it's horrible to say. This is not pleasant, but it's marvelous in the fact that it's bad. Horrible to say. And there are as many, notice the anaphora here, tot, tot, totidem, tot. And there are as many tongues, as many sounding mouths. So these are all subjects here. And, oh no, as many mouths sound, or as many times the mouths, mouths sound, make noise. Tot subrigit aures. So many ears, subrigit, stand upright. The ears are, think of a dog's ears when they go upright, ready to listen. Wow, this is quite the, the monstrum horrendum. So imagine it's this bird, a huge bird, with, for each feather, let me just paraphrase this here, right? For each feather on her body, there are several things. There's an eye, one eye per feather, there underneath, there's also a tongue for each feather, there's also a mouth, and there's also an ear. So as many, to whom there are as many feathers on her body as there are watchful eyes underneath, amazing to say, as many tongues, as many mouths sounding, or mouths sounding as many times, and as many ears upright. The editor of one edition I read feels that Virgil had in mind perhaps a peacock, as he's describing rumor, and I think that's a helpful uh, bird to picture. Lots of feathers, and the feathers look like they have eyes on them, so you might want to imagine a peacock as he's talking about rumor here, a very gigantic peacock. We'll see some more description of rumor in the next video.